All right, guys, even here, and in this video, we're going to talk about Phil Heat. Why is Phil Heat such a hot topic on my channel recently? It's because I believe that he is one of the best bodybuilders that ever existed. I would say that Ronnie Coleman is the number one. The second best would be Phil Heat. I personally started following bodybuilding back in 2010, around 2010, and that was around the time when Phil Heat came. Before that, we had Jay Cutler. Jay looked amazing, Jay was phenomenal, he was probably the best ambassador for the sport since Arnold, he was looking huge, he was humongous, he was a monster, he was a freak. And then came Phil. The reason why Phil is in my opinion better than Jay is because he had more complete physique. Oh man, I miss those days when we had Kai versus Phil rivalry. I was like 16, 17 at the time. And that was super interesting for me, and the quality of competitors back then was way better than it is today, guys, let's admit, I mean, we had Phil, we had Kai, we had Dennis Wolf, he was peeled to the bone, his skin was paper thin, literally paper thin, Sean Roden was there, and he was super aesthetic at the time, you had Dexter Jackson looking insane, the, the quality of competitors was much better, the top 6 was really, really good. Although it was always between Phil and Kai, those two competitors were just top-notch and in my opinion they are in top 5 of the best bodybuilders ever. The judging criteria is the way it is, and if competition was held today, of all bodybuilders from all eras, at their best shapes, I believe that the first place would be Ronnie Coleman, the second place would be Phil Heath, the third place would be Jay Cutler, fourth place would be Kai Green. As far as Fifth place, you tell me in the comment section below, what do you think would be in that top 5? But in my opinion, this is the best 4 bodybuilders in the history of the world. And back then, these competitors were at the top of their game, in 2012-11. That's when I started following bodybuilding, and it was very very interesting, I gotta admit. And I miss those days, I gotta admit, I miss those days. And Phil is still here, he's not retired, he's still here. And there is a slight chance, not a big one, but there is a chance of him coming back and looking the way he looked a couple of years ago. And that is something I would love to see, because he would blow away all those other guys, all those other guys. I mean, they are not even close to Phil when Phil is at his best. His back was his biggest weakness for a long time, but eventually it turned out to be his biggest strength and the reason why he actually won the Mr. Olympia. Imagine that, turning your weak points to your strong points. How impressive is that? He was basically complete, his body had no flaws. The only flaw that you could say that he had was his narrow shoulders. They were not the widest ever, but I don't know if that's really a weakness. I mean, that's just structure, that's not even a muscle, that's not something you can control. But by adding a lot of mass to his shoulders and to his back, he made that look not so noticeable, he created a great illusion, and simply the shape of his muscles was insane. He had a 3D look, his muscles were super crisp, he had such a thin skin, and that's one of his strengths. Jay didn't really have that, Phil did, and he had development on his arms, on his shoulders, on his chest, on his quads, on his glutes, on his hamstrings, on his back, everything was super impressive. And in this video, we're going to talk about which year is Phil's best year. And in my opinion, in my opinion, I always thought 2011 is the most impressive one. That was always my pick. But then I checked 2013, and it seemed like maybe he was bigger then. So let's take a look at these two years and let's make a comparison. Let's see which one is actually the best one. So if you ask him, in his opinion, I believe, I'm not really sure about this, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that he thinks that 2013 was his best. The best combination of conditioning and fullness. Because he was much bigger than 2011. He gained a lot of mass and he was able to get peeled with all that mass. He probably just tried to get bigger and fuller because he was competing against Kai, who was a freak, a monster. He was super thick, he was humongous bodybuilder, and if you compare Phil Heath to Ronnie Coleman, I believe 2013 edition would compare the best, because in 2011 he wasn't as big. And in 2011 we have two editions, two competitions. 
We have the Mr. Olympia competition, which is, by opinions of many, his best shape. And we also have Sheru Classic, which is really, really good conditioning, really good conditioning. Almost the same in 2011, but much fuller shape. And you gotta admit, he looked amazing, he looked freaky. And he beat Jay Cutler, I think Jay was second at this show. But was this better than 2011 Mr. Olympia? And in my opinion, based on what I saw, I don't think it was. I think 2011 is Phil's best year ever. Because take a look at this. This is just perfection. This is just perfect. What is missing here? What is missing here? Take a look and tell me what is missing here. Do you see it? No, you don't see it. There is nothing missing. Everything is where it needs to be. He is perfect. He is perfect. If you take a look at most competitors, there is always something missing. This guy has weaker legs. This guy doesn't have arms. This guy has a bit smaller calves and forearms. This guy has flat upper chest. And so on and so forth. But there is nothing like that on Phil's physique. His calves are there. His hamstrings, one of the best hamstrings ever. His glutes are great, shredded and having great shape. His squats, really, really good. Nothing missing on them. His stomach in 2011 was proper. His waist was very small. His chest was insane. Super full, super, super separated. His arms, some of the best arms in the history of the world. Biceps, perfect. Triceps, insane. Forearms. Maybe the best forearms ever. Shoulders, on point. Back. <laughs> Traps, rear delts, lats, spinal erectors. On point. This is the perfect physique, guys. Literally. Ronnie was more freaky. The muscles that he had were looking maybe more impressive than Phil's. But Ronnie was lacking some body parts. Phil doesn't lack anything. And in my opinion, this is the most perfect physique that ever stepped on the Mr. Olympia stage or any stage on the world, of course. And tell me what you guys think about it. Which edition of Phil do you prefer? Which do you think is the best one? And do you agree that Phil's physique is one of the most complete physiques ever, if not the most complete one? And do you consider him the greatest of all time? Or is it Ronnie for you? Or somebody else? And guys, don't talk about the personality. I don't care if you find him cocky or arrogant or whatever. This is just strictly talking about physiques. So tell me what you think in the comment section below. Tell me who would you put in the top 5 of the best bodybuilders in the history of the world if they competed today by today's judging criteria. And that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like it. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.